Welcome to the President's Diary, a weekly program where we highlight the work of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. The President commenced his week with a midnight visit to several pump stations located in Georgetown and the east coast of Demerara after he received reports that they had been turned off. During the late night inspections, the head of state discovered that the pumps at Riverview were off. The cocoa doors were closed and the worker was asleep. The situation is a very, very, very difficult at the moment. We have our Guyanese brothers and sisters there living, who are living there, are under tremendous stress at the moment. Not only are their homes flooded, their livelihood is taken away, their crops are gone, livestock, livestock is affected. Here in the city, we saw what happened. And what took place in the city was a responsibility. But at the end of the day, people suffer. And that is what worries me. The president also visited the Hope Canal on the east coast of Demerara to determine if the drainage system has been efficiently functioning. This facility um, has really helped out tremendously. And it is facilities like this, the Hope Canal, that we may have to replicate in Barbies and in other areas to drain directly from the backlands straight out to the, the ocean because it is only these facilities that can give you direct drainage. Chairman of the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, Mr. Lionel Wordsworth, said the agency's main goal is to ensure that all drainage structures are fully functional. All the major conservancies, East Demerara Conservancy, Borsiri Conservancy and MMA Conservancies, remains manageable at this point in time. So the water levels have increased, but it's very manageable. The government continues to spearhead efforts to ensure the impact of the heavy rainfall is significantly reduced. Meanwhile, President Ali has rejected allegations made by Chairman of the Police Service Commission, PSC, Paul Slow, that the government's attempt to influence the functions of the constitutional body. In a statement on Monday, the head of state said the claim is not only far from the truth, but is also a malicious attempt to change the narrative. The president explained that he met Mr. Slow more than eight months ago in the same manner in which he engaged other independent commissioners and members of the judiciary. He said it was during that meeting he raised various concerns with the chairman. President Ali says it is his desire to see these commissions function professionally and independently. He further challenged Mr. Slow to produce evidence to back his allegations. On Friday, His Excellency endorsed the leader's pledge for nature, which affirms Guyana's recognition of meaningful action to tackle biodiversity loss, ecosystem degradation, and climate change. Dozens of countries have made similar endorsements. The majority of them did so at the United Nations Summit on Biodiversity last September. Guyana joins Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines as the Caricom nations supporting the commitment. Members of the European Union, the United Kingdom, Canada and Mexico are also among the nations that have also committed to the pledge. Also on Friday, President Ali promised to support Sherlock Jr. Langevin's dreams of attending Stanford University by offsetting additional expenses of the scholarship awardee. Guyana's fourth best performer at the 2019-2020 Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE was accepted into the university on a U.S. $324,000 scholarship but there is a financial gap that needs to be filled before he can commence his studies. The scholarship for the 19-year-old St. Stanislaus College alumnus covers 95% of the cost of his attendance at the university. During the meeting, the head of state congratulated the teenager on his accomplishments and promised to support his academic goals. During a visit to several flood-affected villages in Region 3 on Friday evening, the head of state assured residents that the government is working to enhance its flood relief efforts. President Ali said the government is working on a supplementary budget to take to the National Assembly to support its efforts countrywide. A, a, a few minutes ago, I was on a, a, a phone with the Vice President and Minister of Finance. We are working now on finding additional resources to go to the Parliament uh, for a supplementary so that we can bring relief to you. Over the past few weeks, government ministers have found out across the country to bring relief to persons affected by the floods in all 10 administrative regions. President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali on Saturday visited several communities in Region 7 to meet flood-affected residents. The president visited Olive Creek, Camarang and Jawala and other areas devastated by the extensive flood. 
He was accompanied by Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, and Director General of the Civil Defense Commission, Lieutenant Colonel Kester Craig. We are here today on a listening mission. Okay. We've been flying over the entire area. As you're aware, this is unusual record-breaking rainfall all yeah. across the country. So what you're facing with here, we are faced with in every single region. And we have been going to communities. Uh, we know these are heavily affected communities. So I wanted just to stop and to say to you that the government is committed to helping now and also in helping to restore normalcy, especially for the farmers. Noting that the region has been severely affected, the president said the government will redouble its efforts to provide support to residents. The president also attended the launch of SAPIM's offshore construction facility at Water Street, Georgetown. In his address, he said the government must make investments to protect its people from the effects of climate change. Just returned from Olive Creek, Kurupung Bottom, Jawala, Kamarang, spoke to the people in Jawala and Kamarang, where their entire life has been destroyed. Everything they worked for all their life has disappeared. The president said hundreds of homes and thousands of farms have been destroyed completely. In this regard, he noted that the government must put measures in place to protect citizens. We can talk or have someone lecture to us on what should constitute our approach on how we secure the revenue for the future. But we can secure well the revenue for the future and have our people suffering and living in poverty and farm destroyed and not implementing an adaptation plan to deal with climate change. I'm, I'm sorry, as president, I would not allow it. This has been the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week. Goodbye.